Praise God, praise God, and greeting to everyone. You know, it is so wonderful. Boy, I am so thankful. God is good, people. And you know, I was uh, praying uh, last, well, I pray all the time, but I wanted to make sure that I have a message for going over into uh, 2022 because, you know, I know we are a little bombarded. Well, most people are bombarded with fear, and, you know, there's just so much going on, and you don't know what to do. Uh, you don't know which way to turn, but I have a message, a word from the Lord to help everyone to lift your head up high and look to the hills whence comes your help. Your help does not come from man. Your help does not come from the government. Your help does not come from nobody but Jesus Christ. And so that's the reason I want to kind of just talk with you, going over into uh, the, uh, the new year, which will be 2022. And this broadcast will be played in this month also, but it's going to go over into uh, January of uh, 2022 because I want to... Uh, to, and I have a desire in my heart to help people to understand that you are not in this world alone. If you just keep God's word in your heart, not so much in your mind, but in your heart, in your spirit, and God has promised us, and I'm going, that's what I'm going to uh, dwell on today uh, about the promises of God. Because you see, he has promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. But now, I'm going to have to say this on top of that. You must be born again, okay? You must be born again. And what I mean by that, you must have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. You've got to do that, people. And, and you know, it, it's amazing that, uh, you know, because I, I travel a lot and I, I, and I, you know, I have a church up here in Denton, Texas, and, and I have a ministry, and, I, and I'm always going, and, I, and I'm talking to people, and people are calling, and people are writing, and that I love, and they know that. But, you know, I, I hear in a lot of people, you know, I want you to hear me, a lot of people are not saved. They flock into that building that they call the church, but that's really not the church. We are the church if you are saved. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that. So I'm going to relate to you this morning, give into your spirit. So what I want you to do is just sit down, listen, call someone and tell them to turn their, uh, their television on, on this channel. Uh, I think it's... Um, uh, the, the, the challenge is 179 and I think 39, 197 and 39. So I want you that spectrum and, and frontier, I believe. But anyway, I, I'll give you more information on that. But anyway, I want you to listen because I believe what has happened since this thing they call the pandemic has broken out. People are so fearful. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want to go anywhere. Families are destroyed. They don't want to visit one another. Y'all is just a mess. And Pastor Jerry Gilliard said so. Because, see, it's not right. If you can flock to that thing you call the building, if you can flock to that, well, where are your faith? See, you got to have faith. Listen to me. You must have faith. Now, before I get into running my mouth, because I'm good at that when it comes to lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to pray, but I want you to listen to me carefully, okay, because I have a word for you, and that word is from the word of God, and it's just the promises of God, because the Bible tells us, listen to me, the Bible tells us his promises to his children are yes and amen. You understand? So when you stand on the promises of God, you can't lose. I don't know what's the trouble with peoples today, but I, I yes, I, I know what the trouble is, but most of the peoples don't. Their trouble is they look into man. You can't, man cannot help you. I, I, let me, I'm going to say that again. Man cannot help you. Man are telling you this, and man are telling you that, and man are telling you this. So you don't know what to believe. But as I say all the time, Wherever I'm at, I just got to uh, uh, saying it in church a uh, uh, Sunday. Listen, study the Bible for yourself. Listen to me. I'm going to say it again. Study the Bible for yourself. And let me say this. 
You never get too old to study the word of God. Just because you are 92 or 80 or 100 or whatever, you, you're not too old to study the word of God because you never can not one of us take this word and say, I got it all. No, you can't. The word of God will stay here. Listen, heaven and earth are path away, but the word of God is going to remain. So study God's word for yourself. I'm asking this of you. Study God's word because, see, I used to listen to so many what they call the, the preachers and the preachers and all this kind of stuff. I used to listen to all that. I was so confused, I almost wanted to go and eat a mule because I'm listening at this and I'm listening at this. And, I, and, and none of it, none of it led me in the right direction. I want you to understand that. But when I got in the word of God for myself, studying God's word under the power of the Holy Spirit, which is your greater teacher, that's the greatest teacher you'll ever have. Now, I can tell others about the word of God through experience, through studying, through prayerfully praying, through praising God, and telling others all about the, whoo, the glory, listen, the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk, I'm going I'm to give you promises to stand on as you go over into, listen, 2022. Listen, you need to go and get your Bible and study it for yourself. Now, let's have a word of prayer. Praise God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. And Father, I thank you so much for everything that you have done. Father, from the early existence of my life up until this present moment, I thank you because, Father God, without you, there is nothing any of us can do. Personally speaking, it's nothing that I can do. So I'm totally dependent on you, Father, from what your son, Jesus Christ, done on Calvary. Father God, I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in everything that Jesus done on Calvary Cross. Oh, and I thank you so very much. And Father, for those that are listening or viewing this broadcast, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to touch them and let their lives be changed of hearing the word of God in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father God, there are many going through trouble and trials and tribulations. Well, all of us anyway. Going through trouble and trials and tribulations, Father God. Many, Father God, are, are afflicted in their body, mind confused. Father, they're having trouble. But I pray, God, as they hear this message, Father, concerning the promises of God, that they will be lifted, Father God, to know that they can depend only on Jesus Christ. Because the Bible in the book of Philippians tells us that name, Jesus, is above every other name. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you today for what you're doing. Hallelujah. Because I'm totally dependent on you. I can care less about man, government, federal government, local government. I can care less about that. But I'm totally dependent on you. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the one that he died on Calvary Cross he bled, shed his precious blood. And Father, they took him down, buried him, Father, in the grave for three days. And up on that third day, he rose. And Father, right now, he is at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding on our behalf. Those that pray, hallelujah, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Now, let me make this announcement. You know, <clears throat> We, uh, you know, I have a church here and then, and we was in the park. We was in the Fred Moe Park, but we are not there anymore. We have a building uh, in this in the school over there, right in front of the Fred, uh, the, uh, Fred Moe Park, and this, which is the uh, auditorium. And that's where we are right now. And I just invite everyone to come out and be with us every Sunday at 10 a.m. to noon. You will be blessed, believe me. You will be blessed. So I'm asking you to come out. And uh, I give you the address is 701 Newton Street in Den, Texas. 701 Newton Street. Or you can call, get all the information at the end of this broadcast, the, the phone number, you can write whatever. And then just come and you can call and, you know, ask me if you have some trouble. But it's 701 Newton Street. Hallelujah. Come and be with us. We are having a wonderful time. Uh, next Sunday, 
I don't know what this play bit about next Sunday, but next Sunday the Armstrong family singers will be with us at the church. And so come out and enjoy in serving and worshiping God with us. Praise God. You know, I am just so happy, and I just pray to God, hallelujah. You listen. God, let me tell you something, God is so good, y'all, but you got to know him, and you got to be born again. Praise God, you got to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life and live for him. Hallelujah, praise God. Okay, now we're going to get into the word of God right now. You know, oh, let me say this, because I, I, I had people call, they, they're not seeing me on television, and they're wondering what happened to On the Way Home Ministry, Pastor Jerry Gilliard. Well, I'm hoping and hoping that I get the, I'm going back on. I, I'm, I'm praying to God. Praise God. You Just pray with me. Hallelujah. I listed everyone's prayer about this because I was, you know, this broadcast through the Holy Spirit was touching lives out there, you all. It really was. But since I hadn't been on, people have been calling, you know, and they're wondering what's the trouble. So, so I'm just praying to God that even started in 2022 that I be back on television as I always was. And, and if, many of you may not know, but I've been on television since 1997. I started in Dallas. Praise God. And it has been a blessing to me to, you know, get to touch the people's heart and lives and, and get all the letters and things, you know, and just you know, all the testimony. Boy, it just makes me just want to go, oh, because, you know, God, listen, God answers prayer. Believe me. Praise God. He answers prayer. And you can write if you have a question about this ministry or maybe about the Bible. You can write that the address will be up there. You can call if you have a prayer request. Listen, leave your prayer request name and your phone number so we can get back to you. And listen, I will pray and I will stand in the gap with you. Praise God. I believe in praying. Every Saturday, every Saturday, I want you all to hear this, every Saturday at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Now, I, I pray more than that time, but I'm just saying those are special times that the whole world is down on our knees praying. Every Saturday at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., we are praying. We are coming in agreement. Listen, because the Lord said, Jesus said in this word, in the book of Matthew 19, 18, 19, he said, well, there's two or three agreeing upon the same thing down here on this earth. He will be right in the midst. So join us in prayer every Saturday at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. All people, you know, and I do that, and I can feel the impact of the prayer of the people, their grandmoms and everybody all over the world just praying. Hallelujah. And I tell you, it's a wonderful thing. Praise God that when we pray together. Hallelujah. Okay, if you have your Bible, first of all, I want you to go uh, to the book of Isaiah 26. And this is the first promise that I'm going to give to you that I want you to keep this. Put it in your heart, not in your head. Now, I turn to it, but I really don't have to because it's in my spirit. But I want to just do it, you know, for, you know, to demonstration to let you know, get your Bible and go to the book of Isaiah 26. Okay, and then because when you stand on God's promises, now I want you to I want you to listen. When you stand on the promises of God, how can God not answer that prayer? But, but, oh, listen, you must be saved. You must be saved. You must be a child of God. You must be a child of God. And the reason I'm dwelling on that is because there are more sinners, listen to me, and Pastor Jerry Gilliard is about to say this, there are more sinners in the church than it is out in the world. I want you to hear what I'm saying. And that's the reason I'm saying, please, if you're not saved, get saved. Hallelujah, because they are going to come a reckoning day, and you're going to remember this little lady with all the white on. Listen, I remember what she said. Get saved if you don't, and I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer at the end of the broadcast that those that may not be saved, and you accept Jesus Christ. Saying words doesn't mean anything, but believing those words is what matters. Okay, praise God. Now, in the book of Isaiah 26, in that third verse, this is what it said. Thy, talking about God, thy will keep me in perfect peace. <laughs> and he will. Hallelujah. Because, this is what the Bible said, whose mind is stayed on thee. So you see, he'll keep you in perfect peace when your mind, listen, and according to the book of Romans, that's your chapter, your mind must be renewed, but you have to be saved. 
in order for this to happen. Uh, see, your mind is renewed, so he will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed upon Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And look at, at the, the last say, because he trusts in thee, because you trust in God. Now, I'm going to just use, use myself because I stand on this verse every day. And this is what I say. Father, thy will keep me in perfect peace. Why? Because my mind is always on Jesus Christ. Because I trust totally in him. Hallelujah. So see, that's a promise to you. Listen, so you can write that, write that scripture down, Isaiah 26, 3. Praise God. He, because see, Jesus is our peace. So you, are, well, listen, you have the peace of God and you have peace with God. And maybe one, one, one time, one, maybe one uh, time I'll, I'll go into that and teach you and show you what I mean about you have peace with God and peace in him. You, and you do. But he always wants us to know. Listen, God always wants his children to know that you can have the peace of God because he is peace. Hallelujah. He is peace. He is, he is peace. So when you in him and he in you, according to the book of Colossians in that third chapter, you, listen, he in you and you in him, you got peace. And I, I believe because of all of this happening, all of this that have scared the people, they got so much fear, they don't forgot about that. But I want to bring it back to your attention because you've got, listen, this, you only have one life to live. And you have one life to live down here. Listen, one life. You want to live it in peace. You want to live it in comfort. You want, and I'm, I'm talking about on Jesus Christ. You know, so when you are all bombarded with fear and all this stuff that's going on, how in the world, how in the world can you know anything about Jesus Christ? With fear all in, because the Bible said, and I'm going to take you to this scripture, in the book of Isaiah 41.10, uh, I'm going to turn there, 41.10. Now, this is what it says. Remember, I said to you just before, the world are so bombarded in fear. Because they have heard what this one said and what this one said and what, well, listen, you, I mean, and everybody knocking the, what they call the church, but we are the church, that building. They're knocking that building door open. Just going in there, even have the audacity to take the Bible with them. Can you believe that? And yet and still, they got so much fear because of what man said. Come on, people. Listen, Christian, let's stand up. We are strong. Hallelujah. They are more with us than those that are in the world. I mean, come on. You, can't you understand that? Listen, and I know you are hearing this. You hear, that's the reason I cut all the news off. I ain't got time to be messing. I don't want to hear that. No, because the word of God is what I live by day after day, one step at a time. Every minute, every hour, every, I mean, I, it's just the word of God. Listen, and if we would stop listening to what all these people are saying, and you would understand, and then you will soon discover, listen, and it will resonate in your spirit. Listen to me. It will resonate in your spirit. Listen, you don't have no reason to fear. Now, let me show you what the Bible said. In the book of Isaiah 41.10, it says, fear not. Now, this is what, now, even I can take it all over into the New Testament. I probably will. Listen, as the Spirit will lead me. It says, fear not. God is saying, fear not, because we are only to fear who? And that's God. Why? We, why should we fear? He's God, because he can do anything. Well, then most, of my, most people would say, well, well, man can do anything too. <laughs> I wouldn't put my foot on it, believe me. No, not when you're trusting in Jesus Christ, my Savior. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible say in the book of Isaiah 41 10, now you ought to have two promises down there, and I'm going to tell you what to do with them when I get through. You ought to have Isaiah 26 39. We got uh, Isaiah 41 10. It say, fear not. This is what God's saying to everyone that's listening right now. Take it and let it resonate in your spirit. Not up here in the spirit, in your spirit. Okay. He said, for I am with thee. Didn't I tell you earlier that he said, I'll never leave you? 
nor forsake you. Now, this is what he's saying to you. I mean, how plain can this get? I walk, listen, I walk by the power of the Holy Spirit every day. Not even concerned about what somebody's saying. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I, I couldn't live that way. But I stay connected to the vine. <laughs> the vine is Jesus. <laughs> Over in the book of John 15. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. He's speaking to you this morning. He's speaking through this person right here, Pastor Jerry Gilliard. And he said, be not dismayed. Now, to bring it down to your level, maybe I need to, that word dismayed means be not discouraged. Some of us are so discouraged. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I don't know what to have. Oh, I don't. All, I mean, we go. Forget that. When you got your eyes on Jesus Christ and what he done, your faith is in Jesus Christ. You going to make it. Uh, listen to me. You going to make it. Hallelujah. You going to make it. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, I love the word of God. I love preaching the word of God. I love teaching the word of God. And above all, I love living it. <laughs> I love living the word of God. Because let me tell you something. Many probably know how they put a sentence in a little verse here and a little this here. But I guarantee you, they don't live it. Oh, I know. Don't you cut that TV off because I'm going to tell the truth. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. You got to live that you teach, and you got to live that you preach. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. And it says, goes on, fear not, for I am with thee, and be not discouraged, for I am. I'm your God. <laughs> See, he didn't say nobody else was. He said, he said I'm your God, and that's who I trust, y'all. That's who I believe in. That's who I trust. That's who I believe in. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. And I mean what I say. Hallelujah. And look what he said when you, when you fear not. He said, I will strengthen you. You need some strength? He'll do that. Trust in him. Believe in him. Lean upon him because he is your refuge and your high tower. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Woo. He said, I'll help you. Now, you need help. He, all, he doesn't promise you, I'll help you. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. He say, I'll help you. Now, nobody else, listen to me, can help you. Nobody can do it. No, 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 no. But God said, I will help you. Then he said, yes, I will uphold you. Watch it. I'm going to explain this scripture to you. He said, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. What does he mean by that? <laughs> I tell you. Woo! Good God Almighty. He said, I'll uphold you. He already done said, I'll strengthen you and I'll help you and I'll uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. He is talking about, I'll uphold you with the, my promises, my word that you stand on. I got you. Oh, good God Almighty. I got you. And you know what? You looking at a little lady right here that know what she's talking about. Because I live daily by the word of God. And I always ask the Holy Spirit, starting at the beginning of the day, to lead to God and give me the strength to make it through this day. Because I take one day at a time. <laughs> and the word of God is right there for you and for me. But you got to get in it. Open the Bible and begin studying the word of God. Don't just read it. Study the word of God. Now, I wanted to give you one more uh, promise. Let, let's go to it. One more promise, and that's in the book of a Psalm 55. I want you to go there with me. Psalm 55. I, got, I mean, I got so many, but anyway, I know I won't get to them all today. Psalm 55, when you get there, 22. Psalm 55, 22. Now, this is what I want you to do. As the word of God is going to tell you. And do you know what? Now, I'm going I'm to say something. Now, I didn't know what I was going to 
uh, preach today. But when I was in the dressing room in the Lord, because see, well, I can't, if I go into that, I'll never get through. Let me get through with this first. Uh, in the uh, Psalm 55, 22, this is what it said. Now remember Isaiah 26, 3. Remember Isaiah 41, 10. Now, Psalm, I'm going to end it, the promises on this uh, broadcast with this one. Psalm 55, 22, this is what it said. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. See, he didn't say cast your burden on man. He didn't say that. I'm glad he didn't. Woo! Good God. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. <laughs> May he keep you. Hallelujah. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Now, y'all, it's a lot in this scripture. I may not get to go in all of it. But listen, when he say, cast thy burdens upon the Lord, what is the burden that's on you right now? And you know, I, I know most people don't have burden. They have weight. And if you have weight, that's the devil. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> a burden, listen, is so different from a weight. And most of you is carrying a weight. And there's nothing but the devil in you. I said it. My good God Almighty, I said it. I meant what I said. Hallelujah. People need to know the truth. Hallelujah. And there's a weight on you. Go pray and ask God to remove it because that's the devil that got you bound and got you acting stupid and ignorant. I said it, good God Almighty. Because I come, listen, directly from the word of God. And there's nothing Pastor Jerry Gilliard would not say when the Holy Spirit is, listen, is giving me, you don't see no paper in my hand, I don't need no paper, just give me the word, the, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit will direct me. <laughs> Woo, I love it! Good God Almighty, you talking about, so, Lord have mercy. And then, listen, listen what it said, cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Now, if you have a burden, something you, you face it, you know, like I know a lot of you, you got so much fear. Go, 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 listen, go to God and ask God. And what you should say, I cast this fear, listen, off in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast it off. I bound this fear in the name of Jesus Hallelujah, this burden. Now, you know, when a burden is there, and a lot of times when, when God, when the Holy Spirit, there's a burden maybe, you know, on you, but like I say, a, a weight is what's on most people because they don't, they, I mean, they, if you don't know the word of God and, I mean, you don't really know him, come on, listen, the devil got most of you bound. And now, you know, most people are not going to say, you know, she is so right. I know you're not going to say that, but I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. And if we just stop lying and just confess, hallelujah, and stop trying to hide things, listen, you'll come out of bondage. But when you try to hide, you listen, a lot of people try to hide the sin. You can't, you may, you may hide it from me, you may think you are, listen, but you can't hide it from Jesus Christ. No, no, no. He know everything. His eyes in the book of Jeremiah say his eyes run to and fro. He knows everything in every cryptic, every little, every little dark place. He sees it. Hallelujah. So you ought to come clean. Praise God. And I often tell people because I can see it. Praise God. Listen, I was going to, I think my time is about coming down right now, but I want to say this and I, I want to open the altar just for those that may need to be saved. I want you to just say this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I'm coming to you right now after hearing the word. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of all of my sin. Come into my heart. Help me to live this Christian life. And, Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved. I rejoice with you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And I want you to write a call and let me know. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll see you next time. Wonder so aimlessly life filled with sin. Now I would have led my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Pray.